Ah, what a beautiful fall day. The kind of day that makes me want to take a long romantic walk hand in hand with Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. So tell me if this scenario has happened to you. You're working and building and you're just finding your groove or dado. Your joints are fitting together perfectly. Your project is coming together perfectly just like in the plans when all of a sudden, so you stop everything to make a special trip to the hardware store to get glue. Well, at least I got that part of the project all glued up using my brand new glue. And while that's drying, I might as well get started sanding the rest of my project. Oh, for what kind of psychosis is it that stops me from throwing away used sanding discs? But you hate having to make another trip to the hardware store. So out of frustration, you decide to close up your shop for the day and spend the rest of the afternoon tweeting about it. Guys, one of the real joys of woodworking is finding that groove and enjoying a Saturday afternoon in your shop instead of at a shop. So in this video, I've assembled a list of shop essentials that you don't wanna be without. Things that you don't think about when you're buying lumber for a project, but you'll probably reach for during the build. And I'm not talking about essential tools, but rather things I frequently use that tend to run out and need to be restocked. Number one. Wood glue. This may seem obvious, but for some reason, I always seem to imagine that there's more in the bottom of a bottle than there really is. And the worst thing is that rather than making a special run to the hardware store, you might try to just not use as much glue or spread it on too thin, and that can compromise the strength of your connections. This used to happen to me until I wised up and started buying Tight Bond 2 by the gallon. Seriously, running out of glue is something I rarely worry about now. A gallon will last me over a year and it's cheaper in the long run. I use one of these glue bots for applying glue and just replenish it when it starts to run low, but really an empty mustard bottle works just as well. So when I finally reach the end of my gallon container, I just add glue to my shopping list. I still have plenty of glue in my glue bot to work with without having to make a special trip. By the way, I recommend keeping a running shopping list with you at all times. I like to use Google Assistant. I just add things whenever I think about it and then it's always on hand when I'm at the store. Okay, Google, add wood glue and sandpaper to my shopping list. Okay, I've added wood glue and sandpaper to your shopping list. Okay, Google, show me my shopping list. Here you go. Number two, sanding discs. I use my random orbit sander a lot, and I wasn't joking in my little bit at the beginning. I really do have this weird hang up about throwing used sanding discs away. I guess it's because there's no clear way to tell when they're all used up, except when you find that sanding is taking a lot more effort than it should. Or maybe I just kind of like to save them for emergencies in case I have no fresh sandpaper. This just leads to more frustrating sanding sessions. So I started making a point of stocking up. My new rule of thumb is to add sanding discs to my shopping list whenever I open my last packet. So basically I try to have two packets on hand at all times. One that I'm working out of and one one that is unopened. That way, when I open the last packet, I can throw away all the old sanding discs. At least that's what I'm trying. I could probably save money by buying in bulk, but I haven't really reached that stage in my woodworking evolution yet. I think I fear that I would just drown in hundreds of half-used discs. I like to keep three grits on hand at all times, 60, 120, and 220. Mostly I use 120 grit sandpaper and I rarely have a need for any other grits besides these three. Oh, and hey, it's not a bad idea to stock up on sheet sandpaper too. For these, I also like to include 320 grit paper, which is useful for sanding coats of finish. Number three, one and a quarter inch wood screws. Sure, there are 
oftentimes when I need screws of different lengths, but those are usually project specific and I buy them when I'm rounding up all the materials for a project. But one and a quarter inch screws are something I use all the time for all kinds of unplanned purposes. Maybe for making a jig or just holding glued boards together. The reason I find this size so handy is that I use so much three quarter inch thick lumber. One and a quarter inch screws are perfect for joining two boards together without going all the way through. I always like to keep an extra box on hand and when I open it, I add a new one to my shopping list. By the way, I've pretty much switched to using only star drive screws. They're a little more expensive than other wood screws, but they work so much better that it's one luxury I really treat myself with. Speaking of screws, if you're a fan of pocket hole joinery like me, stock up on one and a quarter inch pocket screws too. If you mostly use pine lumber like I do, make sure you get the coarse threads, not the fine thread type. Number four, painter's masking tape. It's kind of crazy how much of this blue tape I go through. I use it for masking when painting and finishing, for making plywood cross cuts chip free, and I use it as a clamp for holding small projects together when gluing them. I even use it to mark by floor so I know where to stand in certain videos. And that only touches on all the uses I find for masking tape. I find that the one inch tape is the best all around size to get. You can usually find multi-packs of these, get them and keep extras on hand. Number five. Latex gloves. As soon as I discovered these big boxes of gloves, I wondered why I waited so long. I mean, I really hate getting finish, paint, and other gunk on my hands. Plus, keeping your hands clean during the finishing process will help prevent transferring dirt and other debris to your work surface. Not to mention all the time and hassle will save you trying to clean your hands off with mineral spirits or other harsh chemicals. I also like to use latex gloves when I'm changing the oil in my truck or any other car related stuff. I used to think that dirty, greasy hands were some kind of badge of manly honor, but really it's just annoying and gross, especially if I want to eat a sandwich with engine grime on my hands. Yuck. Now my hands are silky smooth. Well, those are five things I find essential to keep in stock in my shop. Let me know what kinds of things you just hate to run out of in the middle of a project. Leave a comment down below. Hey guys, I really hope you take a moment to support the sponsor of this week's video, Casper and Woodworking for Mere Mortals by watching this. I wrote a letter to Santa. Dear Santa, I hope you and Mrs. Claus had a great summer vacation in Boise. As you can tell from your well, 24-7 surveillance. I've been very good this year, except for that embarrassing incident at Coachella. Oh, hey, now that fidget spinners are dead, there's only one thing I want for Christmas, a Casper mattress. Here's why. Casper mattresses are perfectly engineered to soothe and cradle your natural geometry. And as a man with a lot of extra natural geometry, I'm sure you can appreciate that. Casper mattresses provide all the support the human body needs in all the right places even Boise. There are three mattress models to choose from, the original Casper, the Wave, and the Essential. You can surprise me with any of them. Clearly, you're an immortal being, but the rest of us mere mortals spend one third of our lives sleeping. Better sleep will help me do your bidding throughout the year. Now, I know you like to deliver presents yourself, but wow, seriously, a flying sleigh is ridiculously inefficient. Casper will deliver right to my front door in a small, how did they do that, sized box. It's a Christmas miracle. But here's the best part. You can stop overworking that elf labor force of yours and take $50 off any mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash WWMM and using the promo code WWMM at checkout. Hey, you might as well get one for yourself and start sleeping ahead of the curve with Casper. Hey, I forgot. There's one other thing I like to keep on hand in my shop, but this is just me. If you've watched the show for any length of time, you can probably guess what it is. Hey, if you are interested in a new approach to learning woodworking, I've created a unique online course called The Weekend Woodworker. Over 1,400 of you are currently on weekend four of the course and building coffee tables this week. Be sure to download my free guide to affordable tools and I'll email you a video walkthrough of all those tools I recommend. Plus, you'll be the first to be notified when I reopen the course really soon. Thanks for watching, everybody.